Welcome back to week 20. Holy shit. Week 20 of the Shy Sports Weekly Podcast. I am the co-host today, Kyle, with our uh, with our guest, Dan Vasco from, is it WSPA7? Is that the correct? Yeah, uh, yeah. The correct seven version? news, but yeah, WSPA is perfectly fine. There yeah. we go. I, I literally just read the Twitter handle. So there we go. <laughs> uh, like Dan's been on before as a Chicago native, so uh, we're, we'll, we'll jump right into to the number 20s and then a full breakdown of everything that's happened over the the past 10 ish days here with all the transactions. So I'll, I'll start cause it's, it's our show. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go with a number 20 that's on the Cubs that nobody's probably going to think of, but it's, it's uh, from this year, PJ Higgins. I don't know why uh, I know that, but that <laughs> sticks out in my head as number 20. No idea why. Nice. <laughs> you just this this is name. all Chicago athletes wearing number 20, right? We're not just yeah. doing twenties in general. Well, we could do a bonus 20 if you have one, but yeah, we try to stick to Chicago unless you got okay. a Pittsburgh. Cause I, I, I've been like trying to wreck my brain. I mean, Brandon sod, you know, comes to mind uh, for me. So I, I guess I'll throw Brandon sod out there. Ty. Uh, Carlos Quentin. Oh, yeah. Oh guy. shit. Was he number oh. 20? Yeah. And the only reason I know that is because I was at the game yesterday and Becca wore a Carlos Quentin Jersey. <laughs> and you saw it, it was number 20 and number you were like 20. you know what i've got something for this segment yep i was like <laughs> you guys are, they're gonna have no idea what hit them to be honest i did not know i did not know what hit me there uh we'll have to do a little research on this because I, I couldn't find uh bears by the numbers but i know it's got to be like a corner you know so so there there is one that i uh-huh. found that i'm not have you heard of this guy mark carrier safety or carrier safety mm. 90 to 96 it says he was an all pro. Doesn't safety, ring a bell. I, I feel kind of bad that I've never heard of him, but so he he's a made up name. But I'm gonna go Craig Stelts. The he was a safety out of LSU, special teamer, sucked. But I'm gonna go Craig Stelts. I pray that he was number twenty, because if not, that's gonna suck. We're gonna roll with it. I'm gonna, I guess, uh, cheat a little bit and uh, just go with a player that Chicago sports fans are well acquainted with. Um, and that would be Barry Sanders. There we okay. go. Okay. I like that. I could get behind that. He's a, yeah, Chicago. I just, right I, I'm really striking out with the, uh, Detroit's close enough. The rest of, yeah, dude, it's a stone's throw away. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Um, so, oh, the, oh, never mind. Sorry. No, I was looking at Bulls number 20s, and there is quite, quite the list. I'm going to read you all the number, tw- there's a short list. I'm going to read you all the number 20s in Bulls history, and I need you to tell me who's the best number 20. All right. <laughs> Or if you've heard of any of them. Yeah, yeah, right. Walt Wesley, Dennis Autry, John Laskowski, Gene Banks, Bob Hansen, Daryl Walker, Pete Myers. You've probably heard of Pete Myers. Yeah. Freddie Hoiberg, Ronald Dupree, Joe Alexander, Tony Snell, Quincy Pondexter, Raleigh Alkins, and Adam Makoka. Fun. That might be the worst. That Fun might be list. the worst number in franchise history. I really, you know, had hoped at the time that I'd be able to say Tony Snell is the best of that group, but I'm not so confident. <laughs> is it bad that you're looking at that list and you're like, Tony Snell might be the best number 20 in Bulls? Yeah, it's it's possible. It's quite possible he's the best number 20 in that group, yeah. Did I don't know if Freddie Mike- Hoiberg uh, breaks through on that one. Did you throw a Mike Wazowski in there? Is that what I just heard? Jo- John Laskowski. Mike Wazowski. A Mike Wazowski. I snuck that in there, see if you- – you're, you're buzzing today, Ty. You knew I, I snuck that in there. Like a bumblebee, bud. Yeah. Uh, somebody else who was buzzing was Jed Hoyer at the deadline because holy no shit, he made all the trades in the world. So we'll, we'll just jump right into it. If, if you haven't heard, I don't know how you haven't heard yet, but uh, Javi to the Mets, Chris Bryant to the Giants, Rizzo to the Yankees, Kimberon to Parrot to the Sox, Chafin to the A's, Marisnik to the Padres. Um. I guess Jock to the Braves a, a while ago, but yeah, a full fledged fire sale at the deadline. But it's not like we were talking about before. Not that we didn't see it coming. Um, but Dan, just I guess want to ask you, what are your general thoughts? How are we feeling? But from a from a Cubs perspective here, uh, and just finding out that all these guys are they're not Cubs anymore. Yeah, I mean, obviously it was really tough news to handle. Uh, we were talking beforehand about the different reactions to each player, obviously, I mean, if you're a a Cubs fan that's followed the team closely and that follows baseball relatively closely in general, you kind of saw this coming for quite some time. I mean, even, even coming into 
uh, this season with the sell-offs of, you know, the U Darvish and, and deals and stuff like that, it was pretty clear that this team was ready to start to move on and um, wasn't totally sold on competing. And um, so it, it wasn't a surprise, but, uh, you know, as I mentioned uh, to you guys before the show, uh, the Anthony Rizzo one hit the hardest, no question. Uh, I knew it was going to happen, and it's still when it actually happened. I couldn't help but tear up. Just what he's meant to the city, um, the epic moments that he's had uh, in, in this past decade with the team, and obvious, obviously the guy who, you know, catches the final out in the World Series, uh, that, you know, phenomenal picture in that moment. And really, you know, when you think about it, yeah, he was the cornerstone of that young group that was going to eventually be a World Series champion in the early 2010s. He was the first one to come in, uh, you know, and, and, and break through in 2012. And then, you know, the years that passed, obviously, the Contreras, the Baez, the, the Bryants um, came up to the league as well. But, you know, he was the first one of that crop uh, to break through the starting lineup. And, um, you know, it's just everything he's meant to the city. Uh, obviously his work with children's hospitals and what he's meant to them, it's a tough pill to swallow, but at the same time, you recognize that something had to be done, right? I hope that they're able to get one of these guys back uh, this winter. That would be ideal in, in my view at just one of them would be, would be a great, you know, consolation prize. And I do like the haul that they got. I got to give them credit that, you know, there were quite a few prospects out of this that I'm intrigued by. Um, it still sucks. It, they're, they're phenomenal players. You can't replace them, but you know, it's mixed feelings. You, you hate to see them go, but I at least understand the move and where it was coming from. A hundred percent. And I think I saw, I don't know if it was uh, Barstool Carl tweeted out, but it's like, I don't, these prospects could end up being the greatest players in the world. Yeah, right yeah. now, all these prospects suck because like, I, and he's obviously yeah. saying that because like, a prospect's a prospect. You really have no idea what you're going to get. When they're you're not asking. proven until they're proven. Exactly. Yeah, they're, so, yeah. like, in from what I've read, the the haul that they got back for for all of these guys is exceptional. Uh, but you I mean we really don't? The only two I'll say prospects that we really have any idea on um, are Magical and Hoyer because they're obviously they've played in the big leagues. But we'll touch yeah. on them a bit later. Do you think it's uh, one of those moments when, like, when you found out? when Rizzo was traded, is it one of those moments where you'll remember like where you were for the rest of your life? It's like, Holy fuck Rizzo. Like when seeing Rizzo to the Yankees, it, you do a double take and you're just like, what the hell? Yeah. I mean, no, it's like, I was sitting on my couch. Like, yeah. I'll absolutely remember it. You know, I was just sitting on my couch actually. Um, I don't, I don't remember exactly what I was watching. Cause honestly, everything after that, like was like kind of a blur. I just spent the next two hours on my phone watching Rizzo highlights and like that's it's uh it's one of these things I do to myself when I'm when something really like sad happens I dive headfirst into it and want to expose myself to that sadness for the next <laughs> however long you know I was like you know what I'm just gonna keep watching Rizzo videos and make myself cry over this but um yeah no I was I, I was sitting on my couch I saw it and I just immediately like jumped up I was like oh man it it freaking happened you know, cause we were waiting, we were waiting all, all day to hear the news. And that's the first one that breaks. Um, yeah, it, it just, just crazy. Honestly, just crazy. So then that was the only trade on that day. And then, uh, that was on Thursday. And then on Friday, yep. kind of getting more towards the, the three o'clock or four o'clock Eastern time trade deadline. First trade that happened was Kimbrel to the White Sox, which another two cross was it? I think it was two cross town deals in two days with uh yeah. So Tapera went that earlier that day be uh before Rizzo, the, the Cubs got Correct. Bailey Horn, left handed yeah. pitcher Bailey Horn. I think he went to Auburn. Uh and then in the Kimbrel deal for our, the Kimbrel deal to the Sox, they got yeah, that's where they got Madrigal and Tapera. Uh later after that, Perfect. obviously. Yeah, wait, sorry. Well, not Tapera. They got they got Magical or, and uh, Hoyer, Hoyer. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Magical and Hoyer for uh for Kimbrel. Then uh, a little later, Javi to the Mets after that deal. So this is I was watching the uh, the ESPN special with Jeff Passan, and that came across where it was uh where the return of Magical and Hoyer. And as soon as I saw that, it was Magical. I'm like, oh, there's no shot Javi sticking around. You yeah. had a guy that, that yeah. a middle infielder where you could either have him at short or have him at second and shift uh, Nico over to short. 
it was like, okay, the writing is clearly on the wall here that Javi is, is going to be moved. Uh, and then shortly after that, it was, it was announced that Javi and Trevor Williams, I think, and cash considerations, which is the best term in baseball. It really like, is. It's like, what the, what it could mean just, anything. It could mean, uh, you know, 5 million bucks or it could mean, you bucks. know, whatever, yeah. like, yeah, it's, it's all yeah. over the place. Yeah. There's no, there's no exp- clear explanation on what cash considerations are, but that was what the Cubs sent to the Mets for Pete Crow Armstrong. Uh, Ty, I'm sure. Have you ever seen the movie little big league? I feel like that'd be right up your alley. You would either uh, love it or hate it. I don't I don't think I have. You've never seen it? Dan, have no. you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Long time yeah. ago, but I've seen it. I always say I hate this movie because I'm so, I was so jealous of this 12-year-old kid who got to manage the <laughs> the Minnesota Twins. So Ty, your long story short, this guy, <laughs> yeah. this 12-year-old's grandpa or someone is the owner of the Twins and he somehow proves him to himself or proves to the grandpa that he's like the smartest baseball mind ever. So whatever he manages the Minnesota Twins, and I think they go to like the playoffs. I don't know. Did they I mean, write that movie about my life, or just the greatest? Yeah, yeah pretty much. It's a, it's a biopic. Yeah. Well, long story short, the the kid's mom in the movie is Pete Crow Armstrong's mom in real life. So that's a. Oh fun. really? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a, a hell of a connection, bud. Yeah, yeah I don't know if I quite made that smooth, but. <laughs> well, clearly this kid's gonna be a star then if his uh you know. It's got the star gene from his mom right there. Now here, this is uh, this is some high end a- analytics I've got here. Do you trust a guy that has two last names? Do you know any professional athlete that's like just an absolute stud with two last names? Marte- uh, Rogers Cromarty, Antonio Rogers Cromarty had a few years where he was really good. Maurice Jones Drew. Um, Maurice Jones Drew was Martavius good for a time. Caldwell absolutely. Pope. There you Who's go. That? The basketball player for the Lakers, oh, I believe. Yep. Oh yeah, he just got traded to the Wizards. Okay. I think. I think. Don't quote me on that. I, there's, I don't know. There's quite a few, but I can't, uh, you know, if you're put on spot, it's hard to uh, to remember all of them. I feel like they're yeah, all football players. A lot like of them no, are, yeah. There's no baseball players that I, I can't trust a guy with two last names. <laughs> it's, honestly, I, I was kind of most intrigued by him out of the whole crop. Like outside of, you know, magical, I don't consider magical prospect, obviously. So it's, you know, like he's already, you know, uh, some a pretty much a proven deal and, and Hoyer I guess you know he's already had MLB experience of the non-MLB experience guys I was kind of most excited about Crow Armstrong because he's super young and super talented outfielder like you know it's gonna be some time before we get to actually you know see him in action but I don't know I'm, I'm excited for it but do you, do you have uh the analytics uh t- that say otherwise is that is that what you were gonna bring up or you were just talking about the the, the analytics of the name in general. Yeah, these are yeah. we call these uh, KY analytics. They <laughs> they're made up on the spot. <laughs> My favorite kind of analytics. Those are the, those are the type of analytics we use around here. And by <laughs> nice, the way, nice. I uh, I watched Kimbrel pitch yesterday. Still has it, dude. Still got it. Even he's still pretty good. He's still pretty good. I have a, I have a couple of takes on on his usage. We'll we'll get there in a second. Uh, uh, did I mention the the KB trade to the Giants and who they got? They got. Uh, yeah. Nope. Uh, I think it's Alexander outfielder Alexander Canario and then right-handed pitcher, double A pitcher Caleb Killian. So uh, we'll go back to like what we were talking about with the prospects. So you said Pete Crow Armstrong is the one you're you're most intrigued by. Would you say of the four guys, Javi, KB, Rizzo, and Kimbrough, just the, those individual packages? Which trade do you think the Cubs uh, made out best on? Um, it would probably be between the Baez and Williams package and the, uh, the Kimbrel deal. I, I think you could make a case for both of those yielding good returns. Like I already obviously, you know, said Crow Armstrong is what I'm, you know, super excited to see. So obviously it has to be the Baez deal in there with that one. Um, I don't know enough about the, the giants prospects yet. Um, so, you know, I'm sure I could be, persuaded it felt uh initially like it was a little bit less of a return than i anticipated them getting for brian um but like i said you know i haven't i have to delve a little bit deeper into those guys um the yankees ones you know it's it can go either way i don't truly know yet uh with that one so i would probably say for the time being what stands out the most to me is the bias deal and the, uh, the Kimbrough deal for Magical and, and Hoyer. Cause I just thought, you know, Magical's a really solid player. Like you already know that he can, he can play and, and fill a role in this team. And, and Hoyer's 
uh, got some stuff too. So um, those, I, I would just say, I know more about those guys and Crow Armstrong was, you know, somewhat highly touted, um, you know, he was off just first a year ago last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was so. 20 overall around there. Let me see. I actually have a, an article up here um, talking about where he was. Yeah, he was their first round pick. It doesn't say where he was taken, but he was their first round pick last year out of uh, South Southern California. Yeah. Um, high school. So, yep. Lucas Giolito went there. Jack Flaherty. And Max, Max Reed. Reed. Yeah. So, yeah. I've, I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, regarding the haul for, for Chris Bryant, the one prospect that uh, I'm really looking at here. And I mean, these are, these are actual numbers. These aren't my aunt, my fake analytics. So I was looking okay. at Caleb, Caleb Killian. He's in double mm-hmm. a he's six and two with a two, one, three ERA 84 innings pitch, 96 strikeouts and only nine walks. So he's just like shoving it right now. He's in the top of all the, all the like the, the major pitching categories that you would want, you know, K per nine, K per nine uh, strikeout percentage, obviously very similar. Uh, yeah, walk, and only nine and walks. Too. I mean, that's, he's like, I'll say in the top six and like all these and he uh, was the one analytic I actually was looking at is like barrel percentage, the amount of barrels that he's, he's giving up, which is like crazy that they could even track that. I know it's dude. Baseball is second to none when it comes to breaking down stuff like that. It's yeah, amazing. It is. It's like how many farts he has per night. Like, <laughs> yeah. Can it, can you trust this guy? Can how much power is generated from the flatulence, you know? Yeah. Some yeah. Shit like that. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, for I'll say for that trade at least, and I mean the other kid, Alexander Canario, I don't know a goddamn thing. Like I, yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah, I've yeah. seen highlights that make him look good, and then obviously like you see the the player comparisons, it's like okay, maybe he maybe he could be like you know Alfonso Soriano, or he could be like a retired version of Alfonso Soriano, where he's just not that good. Right, <laughs> so right. So it's hit or miss. Um, but I think that Caleb Killian is going to be up. At, I think next year by by uh, okay. Or at the very earliest, he'll be up at some point next year. So, and he he's like a mid to to high nineties, right? Kind of yeah, like basketball ni- guy. So ninety five to ninety seven on the fastball. Um, You'll around, take that around there. You know. Yeah, shit. Especially in this <laughs> like cup I'll uh, I'll take that. I mean, Jesus. Uh, well, especially with this team in this rotation <laughs> that lacks uh, any sort of juice, you know, outside of Alzali. Um, he, he can't pitch so, the lefties. <laughs> no, no. Uh, dude, that, that that dude just gives up bombs now, huh? Like that's oh just his God. thing right now. It's, cra- it's crazy. It is because really he was is. he had a really like really solid start to the year. It was very encouraging. And look, he's still young. Like he's gonna have you know peaks and valleys. So hopefully, because because there is stuff there. He's got stuff. You just we just need to see it develop more. But yeah, with some of these pitching prospects, I'm excited to see how these rotations fill out because we got Justin Steele that we haven't gotten a good look at yet. Um, and guys like Keegan Thompson, that maybe they can be something. Maybe this is a team that actually has a really good rotation in like three, four years. Like who knows? But I, I we'll love see. Keegan Thompson. Yeah, I, I love know, him too. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just because he's kind of looks like a literally looks like a bulldog out there. Like his he face kind of looks like a bulldog, but I, I love him. He, he, I think he had like a two one seven or two two seven. And he's been uh, pitching great, and and he's good for you know obviously like when they use him, they use him for two three innings. Like they've. They're, they're not, he's not just a guy coming in for a strikeout. I mean, he's coming in there for an extended period of time. What was the, the, you know, maybe like a week or so ago when he got out of a bases loaded jam, you know, with, uh, with just one out, like yeah. dude, dude's got, dude's got some talent, man. And that's some poise for a young guy to, to get out of that situation. Granted, he got himself in the jam, but then he, did. he got himself he out of the jam. But that's, so like, that says something, you know, to be matter. able to, to have a short memory like that and just dial in. Hey, so, so the best part of that was uh, I tweeted for my, my gig. I tweeted out a clip of, of Keegan Thompson. I think it was in his first inning of work. And I just, I was a, a sick strikeout that he had. And somebody commented like, yeah, good thing he's given, he's about to blow it here. Or like, a, I said something about like a scoreless outing or scoreless. Yeah. I thought it was only one inning. And then they tweeted that when the bases were loaded and no outs. And then he, he got out of it. And I was like, yeah, he did. <laughs> he, he, my bad, two scoreless innings. And they deleted the tweet. Like, <laughs> of course, loser. of course. Like loser. People can't uh, handle being uh, put on blast on, uh, you know, a public platform. I know. God, like, God, dude, just own it. It's God not a big forbid. deal. God forbid. You know? It's Twitter. It's not real life. Yeah. Uh, and wanna... no one's going to see that. <laughs> or at least in terms of, like, nobody. the Twitter that. sphere. It's a very, very small percentage. Yeah, You'll be all right. Yeah, seriously. You know? uh, 
I want to go to the touch on the Javi trade for a bit. So the, the other yeah. picture that they sent to the Mets was Trevor Williams. Uh, as long as it, like we said, cash considerations. Uh, why, why do you think they sent Trevor Williams instead of Zach Davies? I, I mean, cause I think Zach Davies is a lot better pitcher than Trevor Williams. Yeah. Well, I think that's why, I mean, I think they, they felt that if the Mets are, are willing to, I mean, the Mets obviously wanted Baez pretty bad. So Cubs had a little bit of leverage there and like, we can actually hang on to Davies because with pitching, obviously, and the Cubs have been pretty bad at it in terms of developing great rotations, um, you know, historically, just like, you know, they'll, they'll hit on a carry wood or something like that. But other than uh, a few anecdotes, they, they've really had a tough time putting a whole rotation together. So I think for them, they're trying to get one, the returns that they're getting, that they got from the other trades with pitchers, uh, some of the young, young um, bucks that they've got in the minors, they know that not all these guys are going to hit uh, maybe one or two if they're lucky. So they got to hang on to any solid pitchers they can. Um, so that's why I think, I mean, next year's rotation is going to look a lot different. I mean, I, you know, will, will Al, Al be a, you know, a fixture probably um, will Davies be in there? I don't know, but uh, they want some of these guys with experience. If they're going to also have a Justin Steele uh, as a part of the rotation next year or a Keegan Thompson as part of the rotation next year. I was really happy with the move. I was worried Davies was going to go along with it. Um, and, you know, Trevor Williams was fine. He's a nice story and stuff, but he's certainly um, not someone that you're, like, excited about long-term to be in a rotation or anything like that. So, yeah, I thought overall it was good uh, yeah, good it, for them to get rid of him. Trevor Williams' home road splits, I don't have them in front of me, but I just know they're not good. It's like a he's got an under-4 ERA at home at Wrigley this year, and then it was like a 7 ERA on the road. Yeah, yeah. Can't trust a guy like that. Uh, I was actually surprised that they didn't flip Davies for anything because I mean, maybe the reason that they didn't because they want to resign him, but he's a free agent after this year. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, maybe that's, I, I feel that's like they're going to, they're going to make a move uh, to, to resign him because he's not going to demand a really high price. I, at least I don't think so. I, he's not a, a guy that most other teams, uh, he's not going to be like an ace, you know, um, he's, but, he's on, a, on a good playoff team. He's what a four or five. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, like you, definitely he, back end of the rotation. If Zach um, Davies is your your uh, top three starter in your rotation, uh, you're not one of uh right. you're not going for a pennant. Right, he's he's not that good. I think uh, he's like one of those guys that had the expiring uh, contract after this year that they're confident that they can resign. I could be wrong, you know, and then and then he's gone and they're dealing with a whole new setup. But yeah, I feel like he he might be back next year. Yeah. We'll, we'll get into a little bit of uh, the Cubs free agency talks. I, yeah. I do want to ask you about that in a second here, but we'll go, we'll go to the, uh, to the other trade. We've, I mean, we touched on a bit, but Madrigal and Hoyer. Uh, so I actually was listening to six seventy the score, no free ads yesterday with, uh, I think it was Matt Spiegel. And he, they were just, obviously mm -hmm. talk, they're going over a lot of these, these trades. And the one thing that he said, it kind of, I don't know if there's, if there's smoke, or there's fire or anything like that. But one thing he said was, you know, Jed's got a plan, the, the Cubs these past seven years, there's a lot of swing and miss, right? And yes, and I it obviously didn't start with the Cubs. But everybody's been swinging and missing, and baseball in general is just there's the strikeout rates through the roof. Yeah, he was saying he's like, you know, Jed might have an Jed uh, his his good friend Theo. You know, he's with the commissioner's office, and maybe he knows something that the rest of us don't because they've talked about implementing something. I mean, obviously they they took away Spider Tech to have more contact in the game so maybe and Jed's going out making a concerted effort so Madrigal obviously huge contact guy that Pete Crow yep, Armstrong yep. big contact guy do you do you, I mean this is this might be like the highest thought of all time but do you think Jed is playing like chess when others are playing checkers is there I hope so that? <laughs> well I, I mean I think there is something to it I think it's when you know it's it's kind of like the Bill Belichick um, way of, of how he approaches games and things like that too it's if you're going to zig, then he's going to zag because if everyone's going one way, then there's this giant opportunity over here. Right. So that's why like he brings back the double tight end sets and the power running game when everyone else is airing it out like crazy. Um, I, I hope that that's um, something that can actually work and, and can be fruitful. You know, you think back to like the, you know, A's with the Billy bean era of the early two thousands with Moneyball, Like that was the whole premise of it, right. Get on base. It's about guys, it's not about hitting 
you know, 30 dingers, but then also striking out 150 times. Like it's, it, you know, it's, it's about actually uh, getting opportunities and eventually those are going to lead to more and more runs. I mean, that's been the, the Cubs have not had a problem since, you know, early uh, 2010s and, and in the 2000s of, of actually scoring runs. They can score runs. Their problem has always been consistency. I mean, mm-hmm. 2016 was like that anomaly year where everything came together and they were actually able to produce on a relatively consistent basis. But that's, you know, that's kind of what hurt them in 2017, even though they got to the NLCS. And then the years that followed, they were constantly teams that would put up 12, but then put up uh, a goose egg, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, it, you can't, you can't reliably get consistent playoff teams out of that type of play. And that's why I think that even though they weren't able, they did offer these guys deals to stay with the team. I think it's why they were ultimately okay with also parting ways because, you know, at the end of the day, it just wasn't working like this. It it just wasn't working this lineup and it's tough for Cubs fans to admit that to themselves, but it really wasn't at the end of the day when, when you, you, the runners in scoring position problem and getting those guys across, you know, it, it can't, you can't have that be a consistent problem when you're paying guys top dollar to be your superstars, you know, it's just, it can't work that way. So um, I hope that this is something that will actually work out with your Nico Horners, your Matt Duffy's um, those types of guys that, that just play small ball. But, um, and, and then really all you need is, is one or two guys like a Javi in there that can blast it when you need them to, but they're not going to kill you because the rest of your lineup is able to generate some uh, on base, you know, percentage. Yeah. Ty, so from a, a, a Sox slash Pirates fan perspective, well, no, just a Sox fan perspective, because you're Pirates, again, you're just absolute ass. The disrespect. <laughs> what, like, what are your thoughts seeing the, the like, are, are you happy? Are you like, oh, damn, that sucks? And you're obviously you're not sad. You have no reason to be sad, but are you just yeah. like, who gives a fuck? I mean, I don't what, give a thought? shit, and I've, I've never been one of those people who is so invested in any kind of sports team. I just don't invest my, you know, too much time into all of the professional sports so and what shit, do you but do I, with your life then? I, I mostly <laughs> crank my pud around town. Um, but right. I can, I can see like from, you know, your perspective where you're a diehard Cubs fan, like you always have been, you fucking follow them, you know, as, as closely as anybody can to see all of your best players leave at the same fucking time has to be just heartbreaking. And oh God, which man. leads me to my question that I wanted to ask is which one hurts the most? Rizzo. Not yeah. KB. That was a quick Rizzo. I mean, yeah, I, I remember watching Rizzo's not that it's see, that's, that's like, I, I mean, I shouldn't have answered it that quickly because it's not like I could rank them. I mean, fuck, they all, it's like, God, every one of them get the, you know, the God damn it. Like I can't believe we fucking traded it. Like, no, exactly every time uh, but i have i'm gonna say riz just for the scent probably riz kb and then hobby if there was yeah. like i had to rank them but i mean riz just simply because he was with the cubs the longest he was really he was on the team that lost 100 games and then he was on a team that won 100 games so he's yeah he kind of went through it all in wrigley and then you know he he's like pretty much the face of the franchise for the past decade i'd have to say him i mean dan what do you think yeah, no, I mean, I'm the same way. It's kind of weird because um, I was thinking to myself, like, who who of these three? Because, you know, I was like, I don't want to be naive and think that they're going to keep, you know, more than one. So I was like, which one of these would I ideally want them to keep? And even though Rizzo stung the most and he was the most, uh, you know, sad to see leave, it was KB for me in terms of the one guy of those three that I actually wanted them to build around. And it's primarily because his versatility. Like he's a guy that you can plug anywhere and reliably plug anywhere. And I do, I do think he gets somewhat a bad rap. Like I know he's been injured and I know he's had like issues there, but like at the plate in terms of consistency, he's been the most consistent of that group. And and when he's healthy and when he's actually ready to go, hobby's the most, probably the higher ceiling, but the much lower floor. Uh, Whereas KB is a little bit more, you know, he'll, he'll get on base and he'll, He'll uh, come up, you know, big in certain moments and can play anywhere in the entire infield or outfield. So to me, that value is why I wanted him kept. But Rizzo definitely stung the most because he's the leader and, like you said, the face of that team. Now, yeah. as much as all of those hurt, how much did it hurt that all of those guys hit a home run and they <laughs> debut with their no, team, their no yeah. teams? Did you see what I, I tweeted out 
<laughs> I tweeted I don't out. Think so. Oh, I gotta find it. It was, I was, I was buzzing. I was, I was kind of says something about the Cubs. I don't know, man. No, I, oh, <laughs> it's fuck. Did it? I can't make. I said it was like, it's like watching your ex fuck someone really famous, and like be or no, you're being like a lot happier with yeah, uh, with being the like other with someone else. With yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's that's true. Maybe and, that and, it got you in the feels time. too when uh, when Rizzo was wearing the Chicago gloves oh, and the I Chicago know. cleats. It's like, oh man. Right, you want, yeah, you seriously, you want to talk about right in the fields? I will, I've illegally streamed all of their first at bats, and I, like, I, I, you know, they do the close up on Rizzo and he's got the batting gloves and it's the Chicago Stars. I'm like, oh my god, like, fuck. Yep. yeah, wait, do you, either of you guys have T Mobile or uh Sprint? No, but I use uh, I use my buddy's T Mobile, yeah, MLB. yeah, yeah. the T Mobile Tuesdays. I was gonna say it's free MLB, dude, it's like the best thing ever. I totally <laughs> I use that. It's I can't believe they gave away like $150 value for free. It's yeah, pretty it solid. Is, yeah, it's crazy that they've done that. But yeah, I are you kidding me? I hammer I hammer bats on Tuesdays just because I can watch them for free. There you go. <laughs> uh so one last, I guess, trade deadline bit. So with the Cubs, obviously they traded eight guys. Can you remember just a crazier trade deadline for Chicago sports in general? No, like no, I I really can't. I mean in, in terms, it was a wholesale. I mean, it was or a fire sale. It was just kind of like, you know, the Oprah, you get a cub, you get a cub, you get a cub. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what was, uh, what was going around. Uh, and, uh, and, and also it wasn't, you know, they did have packages, but no more than like two guys. So it's really like spread out. Like the cubs are now spread out across the country. Um, mm-hmm. except Javi and Riz obviously staying themselves yeah, in New York, yeah. but then you got jock in the South and, uh, and uh, Brian out West and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I can't think of a time. And obviously like the NFL doesn't get too crazy with trades. Like if a trade happens, it's a pl- one player. Um, and a most, shit ton of draft picks. Right, right. Like no one, no one unloads like five players or anything like that. Yeah. Basketball. I can't, I mean, I can't think of the bulls ever doing something crazy like that. Uh, I can't think of the Blackhawks ever having, I mean, after the 2010 cup, you know, when they like got rid of like Letty closest, and yeah. Bufflin maybe. And like, you know, some of the, what Ben eager, maybe um, so in that yeah. group. So well, they actually, well, they actually, so I may, I don't know if it was the same trade, but they had off season. Yeah. They traded Sopo, Bufflin, um, Vlad. And may, I don't want to, maybe it was just Nick Letty. Three. Did they, or was Letty? Ben eager. They all went to the thrashers. <laughs> yeah, the yes, thrashers. yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have to look up their roster. I want to see what Blackhawks are on there. But yeah, that's you're you're exactly right. The the that might be the, the closest comp, you know, but but also the core of the team was still intact at that point. It's not like they got I mean, they had Keith, Seabrook, Kane, and Taves still. Um yeah. so uh it's it's hard to compare to an actual core of a team like the Cubs getting rid of the best closer in baseball and then you know, three of their top superstars in the lineup. Yeah, it is. Oh, it, it really, you want to talk about just like craziness. But then I was reading that uh, Chad, he kind of, I'm not going to say went to the players like demands or their wishes, but Rizzo has family in Jersey. So yep. he went there. Javi and Lindor, there's obviously a connection. Uh, Kimbrell, his, I guess his daughter has a heart condition and he's, she's getting treatment in Chicago. So yeah, like, and he didn't want to uproot the family there. And yeah. And then yeah. obviously KB is from the West coast. So he's closer to his home. So, I mean, I guess if there's anything like you could see, see Jed kind of having some goodwill with these players. Right. Yeah. So, and I, and I also think it's a good, I mean, obviously it's just a good move to do, to be a good person. Um, mm-hmm. But also, yeah, you know, the maybe, aspect too. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe it does smooth over some of those, you know, um, hard feelings a little bit with the whole arbitration thing with uh, with KB and, and even, you know, with the with the um, manipulation uh, of KB's uh, service time. So maybe it sets up an opportunity a little bit better for them to get one of these guys in the offseason knowing like, OK, I'm not going back to an, an organization I absolutely hate. Uh, I'll go back to a guy that did me right. And, um, so, I mean, one can hope I keep saying that, you know, watch, watch none of them come back, but, um, it, it'd be nice to get one guy. Oh, Dan, this is the perfect segue. So I, I wanted to talk to, or I wanted to ask you if, did you, or I guess first, did you see Jed's comments today? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't see anything uh, released today by Jed. So oh, God damn it. Of course I, I moved it. Cause I was looking at the Atlanta Thrashers roster from 2010. 
Uh, by the way, there was four <laughs> Blackhawks on the Atlanta <laughs> Eager, Sopo, Bufflin, and uh, Lad all got traded. I don't, but I can't find if they were in the same trade or not. Um, so Jed was on ESPN 1000 with David Kaplan, and he. So yep. this is this is Dom Frederick paraphrasing, but he says this is from Jed. Uh, I don't know why our guys didn't want to negotiate. I don't know why our guys who we offered big extensions didn't even want to counter offer. They said they wanted to be Cubs and then didn't act like it at the table. The only guy who wasn't like this was Hendricks. So essentially, he and then he said, uh, I can't find the tweet right now, but it was something along the lines of look at like what Lance, like Lance Lynn was only on the south side for however many months and he already signed an extension. Like he counter offered, he, he made something work where these, these Cubs yeah. didn't which it seems very contrarian to what I guess we, we were talking about earlier, how he, you know, he sent these guys to like destinations that fit him better or fit them better and fit their lives. Uh, and then even like, just, I guess in his press conferences, he said they, he had very open communication with all these guys throughout everything. So it just seems kind of, kind of odd in general. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if you, if you saw that quote, if you need a sec to, I wonder, I would like to like, like listen to that whole thing in its entirety. Cause that is odd. Like, I, I don't even know what would benefit you of saying that, even if it was true, you know, like mm -hmm. why, why, why put that out there? Um, I mean, unless it was just caught in a rare moment of like pure honesty. Um, I don't know. I mean, I wonder if it's somehow like the context is off yeah, in like, some way. I don't know. Yeah. I mean that, cause that does seem just super contrarian and like, yeah, they did offer them and they turned down the offers, but I mean, it didn't seem from the outside, obviously we don't have inside knowledge necessarily, but um, it didn't, it didn't seem from the outside. Like there was like that much animosity in the situation, especially from Hoyer's <laughs> point of view. Yeah, exactly. Like that's a, it just, it, it caught me off guard. And so Jed, <laughs> This is another quote that Jed fucking was doing the, he was doing the PR tour today. He was on 670 later then. And so this is 670 tweeted this out. Jed Hoyer on no extensions for the Cubs core. Uh, that's always going to be my great frustration. I put my head on the pillow every night knowing we did everything we could to extend these guys. Hoyer reiterates Cubs made uh, offers. Cubs made will stand up exceptionally well in hindsight. So is he just saying that these guys are just overvaluing themselves? Probably. And honestly, they probably are, you know, like if, if you really think about it, which, which one of these guys is an absolute superstar. Like I'm not paying 300 million to a KB or to a bias. The only people I'm paying 300 million to, like, I, I wouldn't even pay it for you get, you Harper, like, like the Harper hand, deal. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's Shohei, it's trout, you know, and it's like, Swan you know, Soto. yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the elite of the elite players, you know, Acuna, I would probably, you know, I, I know he got injured this year, but like, he's a, a young guy that I'd be like intrigued by, but even that would be a high price. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, Tatis, obviously like there, there are just. But Tatis you know, very... is over like 45 years, 300 million. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Something exactly. like that. Jesus. <laughs> but no, you're, but, you're uh, exactly right. Yeah. Like I can't, I like 300 million. No. And then Javi was, I don't know what Chris is looking for, but I, I'm assuming it's around. 300 million over i'll say 10 ish years ballpark on uh on each figure but there was the report that javi wanted 200 million and no fucking way am i giving javi 200 million and then i know the cubs offered rizzo i, th or I shouldn't say i know i think the cubs offered rizzo a five-year 70 million dollar extension yep. during spring training or during the offseason uh which i don't think he's gonna get now no I i'd be surprised. i thought that was super fair like i at the time i was like i I can't blame them for not giving him the hundred million dollar deal or, or whatever he's actually looking for. Um, I think, you know, some of these guys are going to be surprised uh, come this winter that, that, you know, that's, that's just what it's going to be. Cause I, I don't think they're going to yield the major contracts that they think, especially they just haven't put it together yet. Rizzo for one is, is the oldest, you know, he's, he's a 31 year old. Turns 32 um, on, or 32. Uh... Turns 32 on Sunday. Hey, okay. I just want to let you, Dan, I just want to let you know me and Rizzo have the same birthday. Just want to let you know. That. Oh, is that right? Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, happy Ed, birthday to you, too. Thank you. I That's will not be you. wishing you a happy birthday. I'm so just, fishing. I'm just fishing for happy birthdays. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, yeah, I mean, it's a 31 to turning 32-year-old first baseman that you're just not going to – I don't issues. see many teams in, investing in that. Um. And then with KB, 
there is that lingering, you know, injury thing. And then with Javi, it's the inconsistency. So all of these guys have, you know, a thing that, that could be a deterrent for some clubs, you know? So that's, I'd, I'd be interested to see actually what gets offered, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But it, KB's baby blue eyes, dude, you got to take that shit. Uh, that is very true. That is very true. That's, that is yeah, hard to say no to. Those. I forgot about those. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, I think just obviously, well, it, Twitter doesn't help, but <laughs> in general, just them having great first games or great first weekends. It's, I saw people like, damn, can you imagine Chris Bryant, Javier Baez, and Anthony Rizzo on the same team? They never lose. <laughs> you know, like shit, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, no shit like that. And it's like, yeah, like, you know what? Yeah. We, like, we've seen it happen it's, for the yeah, Cubs. They, they needed you know? to do it, and it sucks. <laughs> but at the same time, like, you needed to trade them. Yeah, and I just I, – I, I forget who I was no. um, listening to. Someone made a really good point, though. Like, the biggest down – the biggest fault – that management look you can say what you want about the rickets like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna deter people or like tell them you know that they're wrong about the rickets family but this isn't this isn't the argument to use against them there are a million others but this isn't the one this isn't it guys like fine there go the go another route because this one made sense and this one was mostly hoyer anyway like he's he's doing he's trying to to build what you know Theo's vision was uh, when he joined the club. So I can't fault them for that. And um, someone, someone brought up the point that, the, you know, the only fault really was organizing their contracts to where they all expired at the same time. That's I mean, that. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, I guess the biggest issue you could take is that they put themselves in a situation where they had to literally uh, unload three, you know, all-stars at the same time. But, you know, sometimes that's just how things shake out, though. You know, there's no working around it sometimes. The, the Brian and the Javi one, obviously, is kind of just happenstance because they both came up at the same time with in their service time. Just uh, yeah. And you had to or else you're not getting the 2016 World Series. You know, it's like, yeah, right. So, I mean, it, I'll that, take it. I think that's kind of shit. Um, so, I mean, we were touching, I guess, touching on this part earlier, if of of the three, do you think any of them resign or who do you give me uh, an order of the best chance you think they'll come back to the North side? Um, I actually think that Rizzo is the best chance of coming back because I, I don't think he's going to get close to what he expected. And I think, you know, he may just end up taking, you know, a deal that the Cubs are prepared to offer, which is probably going to be right in the same ballpark of what they did earlier this year. Um, then I would say after that, I could probably see, I could see Bryant um, two, but it's a close two and three tied with Baez. I mean, I think it's pretty close either way in terms of which one comes back. And, and maybe some of this is just my wishful thinking as well. Um, you know, I, I ideally would have Chris Bryant back of the, of the three, but I, I think I think the most likelihood for bang for your buck is going to be Rizzo. Cause I don't see them giving a huge contract right now, at least to, uh, to those guys. So uh, a smaller contract, like one that Rizzo will yield, I, I could see that happen. Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to, I'm going to ask you this and there's no way that you have anything prepared for this, but <laughs> okay. I'm for, ready. What do you, what do you see jet doing or going after? And I'll say free agency and just, the 2021, 2022 off season to, to build the next, as he says, the next great Cubs team. Yeah. I, you know, when, when you're looking at like the pitchers and stuff, um, it's a lot of older guys that are, you know, would have to be win now situations. Uh, I am curious to see if they are interested in going after someone like a Nolan Arenado, if they're not able to actually, um, but he, he has an opt out, correct? I think, oh yeah, he does actually have an opt out. So, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm saying he has an opt out this year, so he could be a free agent, but it's obviously, yeah, yeah. Not. I mean, he's on their free agent, the Spock track, free agent tracker, mm -hmm. um, putting him at the number four um, option, but uh, you know, he's making 35 million this year. Like it's oh. gonna, oh. it's, <laughs> that's what he's making. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, is that what is that like, is he projected to make or is he, uh, if he opts in, is he going to make 35 in the next few years? Or I, I don't know what his actual st payout structure <laughs> is, 
because they have uh, spot track is awesome. Coming. Like I love using their, their thing, but they, they put market value, you know, for a lot of players. Um, but some, they, they don't have a gauge on yet and he's one of them. So I don't know what, what it would be if he did move. Um, but I also don't know what it'd be if he, you know, w- what his actual payout structure within his current contract is. So it'd be interesting to see. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, so Brian's making like a little less than 20 this year. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, you want to think that they could go after a pitcher, but I, I, I'm having trouble looking through the lineup of the Grankies, the Bowers, the Verlanders and saying, oh yeah, they're going to go or Kershaw. Like, like, like these are potential, you know, free agents. I don't see the Cubs going after any of those guys, you know? And if so, it's like, I mean, is Darvish, is Darvish actually, no, he's not going to be a free agent. Um, what if a guy like Trevor story, what if Trevor story, I don't know, you know, like, that'd be cool. I want Corey, Seager. Like, Corey Seager would be, yeah. Corey Seager would be the one, uh, especially to get like another, you know, lefty in the lineup. Um, Can you imagine but, an infield? And this is the chance of this is are probably very slim to extremely none. An, an infield of Rizzo, Seager, Madrigal, and Horner. And I don't know if you put Nico at third or you sort them out however you want, but you may, that'd be a, I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility that that could be the Cubs infield. I mean, that'd be pretty, year. that'd be pretty good. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find a, I mean, that's, you have, I mean, obviously you can't crown Nico yet, but he's, he seems to be on the trajectory of a potential gold Glover. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you, you know, if you had Corey Seager into that mix and Rizzo, I mean, you got a dyna- dynamite infield, um, probably one of the best, if not the best in baseball at that point. So yeah, I, that's out of the realm of possibility. You know, now that you mentioned like Corey Seager actually probably does make the most sense and they can get him for a fairly reasonable. You're not going to have to do a blockbuster uh, mega, mega deal for Corey Seager. I mean, he's still a great player and he's going to get a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, but it's not going to be uh, anything on the level of what, uh, you know, some of these other huge, huge contracts these guys are getting right now. So that, that could definitely be a possibility. I, I could see that for sure. I'm looking at Corey Seager's numbers just from the past few years. This dude's a, this dude's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he good. is. He is. Breaking very... news, Corey Seager, not bad. Yeah, Jesus <laughs> Christ. I mean, he's not pretty like, good at baseball. Uh, I'm looking. I don't mean, yeah, he doesn't strike out a ton. He really does. He puts the ball in play, but and he's, I guess, his knock, if you want to call the knock, is that he he's not a huge home run guy. I mean, he's around 15 to 20 home runs, but yeah, if you're going toward more towards a, a contact oriented approach already, does he? I mean, he seemingly fits the mold perfectly. He's 27. He'll turn 28 next August or uh, next April. So. I, yeah. that's the one name that I don't, there's, I have no, in terms of pitchers, what would, what would your thoughts be? If like, like for one, do you, do you see them trying to go after a pitcher this off season, or do you think it's just not going to happen? And they're just going to try and see what they have with all of these young guys and all these, uh, you know, this working pitching rotation. Yeah. So I, <laughs> fuck, I've, I've thought about this way more than somebody who doesn't get paid at all to think about this, think, <laughs> think about this. Uh, I re- I don't I almost think it depends on how Steele and Keegan Thompson how they somewhat perform or how they look as a starter uh, yeah. in these next which is why months. these next two months are super important like yeah. I, that's why I'm still excited to watch Cubs baseball that actually I I think I skipped the question because I meant to ask you that what like for the next two months here is that like what are you excited yeah. about watching the Cubs is it th- it's the starting pitching it's the pitchers yeah 100 percent it's the pitchers um Although I'm not going to lie, I've kind of enjoyed watching Rafael Ortega. Yeah, who the fuck <laughs> like, is this guy? Jesus. I, I, when he appeared, what was it like? Maybe like a month and a half ago. It came out of nowhere. He has braces. And, and I, <laughs> wait, does he actually have braces? He has braces. I don't think I've noticed that. Holy smokes. Yeah, Kyle, he has, Kyle don't dude, adult brace him. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need him eventually. Probably. Dude's got one of the strangest... Um, he, he looks so dopey when he walks up to the plate, you know, when he's doing his like swaying motion and he's yeah, chomping he, on his gum and stuff. It looks so silly. He's just, he's just getting um, gum out of his But dude's, dude's good. Like he, he's like, and, and outside of the three Homer game, what was it yesterday or the day before? But it mm-hmm. was, it, he's actually been a pretty solid 
um, piece uh, to that group. Obviously, Nico's awesome. So, like, I, I'm excited to watch some of these guys, but these are guys that we've already kind of seen some from. I'm, I actually, I really like Steele. I'm really looking forward to seeing him. I know I, he's probably going to get the, like, the, a start before Keegan, I imagine, because Keegan hasn't been fully stretched out. Uh, mm-hmm. whereas yeah. Steele's on his way to doing that. Um, but both of those guys, I'm really looking forward to seeing. And look, I mean, we need to, we need to see what this bullpen's made of now. I mean, especially like those are, those were two guys that actually p- did really well in the bullpen earlier this year. And, you know, Keegan even recently, but now that the bullpen's gutted and those two guys are going to end up going into the starting rotation sooner rather than later. I mean, where, what are we looking at here? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to be a big thing. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely focused on the mound. Um, but, and I also just kind of want to see, you know, how these guys compete, you know, I want to see, I want to see Wilson, you know, s- step up and, uh, have some big moments because he, maybe he's the leader of the team. Now you, you could say, you know, in terms of uh, position players, I mean, he's the guy, he's the one that's, that's been there, um, for, for the longest and who has the world series ring. So, but, um, but I was thinking, I don't know, Noah Syndergaard uh, yeah. is going to be up, you know? Like, that was one name I had. That was literally the next pitcher if, when we went back to it. That was who I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. And he's 29, so, like, they could, they could invest in a guy that they'd have, you know, not to necessarily compete right away next year, but, you know, a guy that they might have for another run in, in the next couple of seasons. The, so, only, the only problem is, is he hasn't pitched in – He's been, now, yeah. Man. I mean, injuries obviously oh, has been the, the huge, huge knock on him. But if that drives the price down, maybe, you know, maybe it's worth a, a flyer for a guy like that. Um, <laughs> Fuck yeah. You know, like I'd be more than happy with it. Uh, so, yeah. yeah well, and then we'll see if they re-sign Zach Davies. So uh, a lot of options. I'm actually, so I'm actually looking at, you said Al's always a young pitcher. How old do you think Ed Bear is? Well, I think uh, what is he? He's like twenty six, I think. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit! I did not know he. He's only a couple yeah. months. Yeah. Jesus. But that's. I mean, that's still young for a guy. With he doesn't know. have a lot of mileage on his arm. Right. Right. Like he's he's a guy you could you could if he ends up getting to where they they think he could be. I mean, he could still be you know a Cubs pitcher for the next you know six seven years, and I, you know I would take that as a guy who's just. You know, it's not like he's past his prime and, and they're trying to figure him out. He's still an ascending pitcher. But, yeah, he's he's not, like, super young. Definitely not super young. But he's, you know, I'm also – I'm 30 years old, so, like, all these guys are young uh, to me yeah. at this point. So <laughs> Yeah. Fuck, I'm even older than Edgar, which scares me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which I should be saying. he is. He's very young. He is very young. Uh, um, what was the – so, oh, going, that's what I want to say. Go, so going back to what you were, you were asking me earlier about what I think they're going to do in the off season. And so, yeah. yes, like I said, I think it does depend on how, um, on how Steele and uh, Keegs, Keegan Thompson do over these next two months. But I also think it, it depends on how quickly they want to, if this is, you know, I don't think this is a full fledged rebuild because if it was, I think they, they would have traded Hendricks and I think they would have traded Contreras yeah. Um, and God forbid. And then that. Davies for sure. And I like they would just um, blowing it up and get yeah, as yeah. many prospects as possible. So I guess from that front, I have, I'm, I'm holding out to hope that they aren't going for a, uh, a full fledged, like three to five year or four to six year or whatever, you know, along those lines of, of a rebuild. So I'm going to say their rotation next year is going to look something like obviously Hendrix. I'm, I'll say steel uh, Keegan Thompson, Ed bear, uh, and then I'll say, a, pardon me, a combination of whether it's Zach Davies or if they get a guy like Syndergaard, which would be phenomenal, or another That'd free agent specific. type pitcher who can come in. Uh, but I, I mean, shit, I also, I could also see Adbert not being in the rotation if he just yeah. really doesn't figure it out and he's just getting smoked by lefties continually the rest of the year. Next year in the spring training, he's just the, that doesn't matter. He's just getting dicked on again. I mean, I can obviously see that, but that's after free agency so it doesn't matter and i mean trade wise you could speculate who the cubs could trade for i mean and everybody could be available like that's right who knows who they could trade for um but i mean i see this as not a more of a uh, 2016 yankees retool where they they traded chapman and got glaber torres back and then re-signed chapman i hope exactly something along those lines 
I'm, that, at least to me, that's what I'm hoping. And I, I yeah, think yeah. that's what it is. I know I was reading a, uh, an article today that I think it was from Gordon Whitmire. He said, if it looks like a rebuild and smells like a rebuild, it is a rebuild, but I think he's probably just being, <laughs> he's just looking for clicks. Yeah, I, I no, I agree with you. It's it's a it's a half rebuild. Um, it's it's a what has Jet been calling it retooling, right? Like mm-hmm. they're shifting some things, but they, I mean, they do. It's not like they, it's not it's not like the basement fell out of this team. I mean, I I think, like you said, Contreras being there is a good. He's one of the best catchers in baseball. Like you can't, you can't say like a team that has that and has a Hendricks who just honestly, man. Like, I know that the guy's not flashy or whatever, but he's, like, so underrated to me, like, across just general baseball fans. Like, people I talk to, they they just think he's the worst. And I'm like, yeah, just – but, like, he's he's super consistent, and the guy is just, like, cool as a cucumber on the mound. And um, dude's got stuff. I mean, 13 wins. Like, he leads – he leads Major League Baseball in wins in the last two years. It's like, how can you say a guy like that is not, like, an ace? Like, he is – he's playing like an ace. Like I get that he doesn't have the, uh, the, the sex appeal uh, on the mound of like, uh, you know, Kershaw or like guys that just have nasty stuff, but like, but he's got an absolute hog gets the job yeah, done. Exactly. Exactly. And it, not, it's not even that he has the most wins over the past few years. Like obviously wins can be an arbitrary stat if you get no run. Sure. Court. Sure. He is the most quality starts. Exactly. 29 and, and or something like that. Fake. Yeah. Yeah. You can't fake that. No. Yeah. You can't fake a big dick. Yep, you can't. Exactly. Put that on a Nick board. And yeah. we just found the title of this episode. You can't fake a big dick. <laughs> uh, speaking of big dicks, no, I'm kidding. Uh, well, let's go over to the White Sox here for a bit. Um, obviously, so they didn't have quite the, uh, I'll say the, the aura or the, for like, I don't even what the phrase, the sex appeal that the Cubs had around their uh, the panache, yeah, the panache. <laughs> uh, but they obviously they got Kimbrel, they got Tapera, uh, Cesar, Her- Cesar, or Cesar Hernandez, the yeah. second baseman, and that I think that was their only three trades, right? Ty, the resident White Sox guy here, sounds about right, dude. All those are definitely correct. I'm not sure if there's others. Again, we'll say those, those are I the, don't know. The, the I mean, it's like, is that the best bullpen in baseball <laughs> right now? Like. I yeah. mean, you have to be. I mean, so they it's have- unbelievable. This, uh, like, I, I truly think they have a really good shot of winning the World Series, not just like a contender. Like, I, they, they have a very good shot at, at winning the World Series. You know, like if, if they were in the NL, it, it may be a little tougher, but, um, you know, I don't know. I, I can see them, I could see them running the table. So let's, let's talk about their pitching a bit here. So they're, if they, in the NLC, or pardon me, the ALDS and ALCS, what do you, who are you starting game one, two, three, and then I've seen the CS game four? Uh, you know, Giolito. You start Giolito game one? I probably am starting Giolito game one. Okay. Because – I don't know. I, I, I think it, it, maybe I'm getting a little too cute with it, but I think like str- strategy wise, like I'd like to save Rodon. Um, I don't know when I, I guess I'd, when I would pitch Rodon would be like game two. Uh, you'd have to pitch Rodon like game two then. Right. Like, I don't know. I, I think we go Lance Lynn, Rodon, and then Giolito. That, that's what I had written down. Yeah. I, I mean, Okay, I get, what what a problem to have. <laughs> you know, no, seriously. I mean, it's a great problem to have. Um, and then I'm assuming D- like a Dylan C- you would throw Dylan C's game four and not I mean, I don't think th- I think Dallas yeah. tits off like tits rocked. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very true. For lack of a better phrase. I mean, I just think he's getting smoked right now. No, he is. He is. Um I don't know. Like I I know people, I think it depends on the situation. Um if it's world series, you, you got to throw your best out there right away. If it's conference series, you want to throw your best out there right away. Divisional though, for me, um, I feel like, I, I guess it would also depend on the team, you know, it would really depend on what team goes up there, but I think there's some strategy involved. Do you just throw Joe Giolito out there, get him rolling early. And then maybe, I mean, maybe Lance Lynn two and then, and then row down three and then whatever mix you want to, to, round out the next two starts but um 
I like you, like you said, you can't go wrong with really any approach that they have and their lineup stacked and their bullpen's great. I mean, they really a setup man for, I, I know we'll probably end up getting to this, but like the setup man mm-hmm. and the closer being completely interchangeable between whether you want, you want to do Kimbrell and Hendricks or Hendricks and Kimbrell. I mean, that's amazing. Like that's, that's such crazy. a good that's situation. Crazy. So and I, I I have no this like I I always say I have no facts behind what I'm about to say which is which is great when you're talking on a podcast but that's yeah, par for the course. Let's... So is is Tony Larusa using Kimbrel as his eighth inning guy? And I only say that because he used them yesterday in the eighth inning, and he used them. I'll say he used them in the ninth inning when they were down a run. Uh, yeah, on Saturday. So is he is that his, well, he's using K- Craig Kimbrel as the setup guy? I mean, some you could probably speak more to it. I, I from what I understood, they <laughs> he's, he's I know. shaking his head. He's, I know. Um, I know. What, no, what I understood was that yeah. when when they made the trade, they said their intentions were to use them interchangeably as closers. They were they they said they're both getting save opportunities, and that's what we'll we'll say it. We'll leave it at that. So, um, I've had I've talked to a lot of people about this situation. Half of them say Hendricks should be the guy in the ninth and the other half say Kimbrel should be the guy to me. I think Kimbrel should be the guy. I mean, he's, he's the best closer in baseball right now and he's playing absolutely lights out. I, I know Hendricks obviously phenomenal too, a fellow all-star. Um, and I don't think you could go wrong either way, but I would say Hendricks Kimbrel. Um, mm-hmm. But I, there's plenty, there's plenty of argument to be made for the complete opposite way too. I mean, it's to me, it's interchangeable. So, I mean, if you're looking at, if you're going strictly off numbers and uh someone's career resume yeah obviously uh Kimbrough's your guy he's he's top 10 all time in saves he's having arguably the best year of his hall of fame career yeah um and it's not like Kimbrough's some scrub or uh, Hendricks is some scrub he's got a two set or two four seven with 26 saves I think I mean again talk about a great problem to have I think you go into each game I mean and here, let me rephrase it this way. So in the eighth inning, say if you're you're up one and it's the you're, the Astros top of the order, right? And you know, that's, that's essentially more important than, or if it's two, three, four, or whatever the case is, that's more of the inning that you need the closer compared to yeah. four, five, six or five, six, seven, or whatever that is, right? So that, like, I think you use Kimbrel in those more high leverage, high leverage quote, or uh, higher quality at bats where you could use Hendricks where he, or if, if Kimbrel's down a day, you use Hendricks in those situations, but if not, then you just use Hendricks in the ninth where he's, he, guess what? He's an all-star closer. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, and then you have obviously Michael Kopech to before that. And is it Carlos Ruiz Ruiz or whoever the Ruiz guy is? He just pumps gas, like fucking bowling ball sinkers. Jesus Christ. I don't even know his <laughs> name, but I just know he throws. It's Jose, him. Jose Ruiz. Jose Ruiz. Yeah. Is, there, is yeah. there a Carlos Ruiz? Is that a guy? Is that a? Th- uh, I don't th- probably. Think, I don't think so. Probably somewhere in the world. Maybe I mean, yeah, Ruiz. definitely somewhere in the world. It's 100 accurate. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, the Sox. They, they're pitching. I mean, I, here I'll ask you this: what, Do you think the Sox make the World Series? Yes. Yes, I you do. do. Ooh. Yeah. I, I think they do. And this is. I hope that I put so right after they uh, they traded for Kimbrel, I put a future on them. They were plus seven hundred for the World Series. Is it really? Wow, like that's man, that's high, man. To win the World Series, to win. The oh, World to win Series. it. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and that's. I mean, hey, still though, I mean, it's if they're gonna get there, then you've got you've got just as good of a chance, you know, that they're gonna win it. I mean, if they're going up against the Dodgers, yeah, that's tough. But like their lineup can hit anyone, so they just have to have a couple good days. I mean. It, it, by the way, the Dodgers just unreal. Like they, you know, potentially lose Trevor Bauer, and it's like, oh, we'll just get Max Scherzer. Max like, Scherzer we'll just throw Scherzer. him into the. Like, yeah, why not? Let's let's just do that. It's like do the Dodgers just, just throw away money. money? No, they don't. They just, they, they... Yes, yeah, so, well, let's do a quick. It's wrap the it Yankees, up. man. We'll do a quick uh, recap around the league before we wrap it up. Uh, yep. So obviously, the Dodgers they got uh, Trey Turner and Max Scherzer. The Blue Jays got Barrios. This is a crazy deadline. Jesus Christ. Uh, the Braves are still – they got that Adam Duvall. Yeah, they got Adam The Braves Duvall. still going for it? Like, what are they doing? I don't know. They're, they're in a, an interesting situation. Um, 
he comes back. They completely revamped their outfield, like entirely. Um, so they needed. Uh, to. Yeah, they did. They did. You know, they got Rosario and uh, and Adam Duvall and uh, Jorge Soler. Um, I forgot. I forgot about Soler. That was the other guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're. I mean, they obviously lost their ace to start the year. You know, Soroka, and then uh, Acuna goes down, and it's just you know, it's a tough situation for the Braves. I mean, they've got a pretty stacked lineup when you put it all together, take the injuries out of the equation. Um, and they still can compete, but they're at their 500, you know, it's, they're not, they're not in like a super tough division, so they could still make a run at it, but I don't know. It's uh, yeah, I, I'm not uh, super confident they'll be able to get there, but yeah, they're definitely making moves. And then Schwarbs to the Red Sox, John Lester to the Cardinals made me want to puke. Yeah. Ty, good you do Lord. Not know about good Schwarbs. Lord. I had no idea about Schwarbs. <laughs> Your head whipped up. I thought you were about to snap your neck. Shows how much I pay attention to the fucking MLB. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm looking around too. So, did the Padres get anybody? I mean, they got Daniel Hudson from the Nats, but yeah, I mean, obviously Scherzer was supposed to go there, but yeah, I thought they were was, going. That was crazy too. Yeah, they broke the news and it made it seem like it was for sure like going to happen, and then yeah, just very quickly wow. didn't. Uh, hashtag Adam Frazier dog. Come on. Uh, oh, Adam Frazier. There we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. I've got, got rid of got the Pirates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Pirates guy. Resident Pirates guy. Hey, you want to talk about an all-star infield? Holy shit. The Dude, Pirates. they literally have the best yeah. infield in all of baseball. Yeah, they do. It's disgusting. They do. Yeah. Well, Eric Hosmer is kind of shit, I guess. I thought you could have asked, told me a week ago or two weeks ago that Eric Hosmer made the all-star game. I'm like, yeah, dude, he's a stud. Apparently, he sucks this year, which I didn't know. But That's baseball, baby. But as uh, baseball, baby. Hey, <laughs> you, know, you know what the craziest trade? And it wasn't even a, a, a really big name trade, but, but just like the trade that kind of confused me the most was the Mariners trading Kendall Graveman to the. Astros. Yeah. 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 And Cause they're, they're competing for a playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, I, I work with a, a Mariners fan and like, he's all about like not caring if they make <laughs> I, I the playoffs and stuff. Exist. He's like, it's, it's just, you know, so what if they make the playoffs? Like we want to make a run. I'm like, yeah, but like to, to make a run, you got to get to the playoffs. And like in the playoffs, I, I know it's baseball and like the best teams do win out, but like anything can happen. You know, you don't know if the, if the Dodgers are going to have an injury or something that's really going to like throw a, a wrench into something, or you or just like have a, a good COVID day. outbreak or some shit. Yeah. You know, like it's, yeah. Anything can happen. And we saw the Cubs dominate Kershaw, Bauer and um, um, Bueller earlier Walker this Bueller. year so yeah like and, and and the cubs have you know been a, a fairly rough team even when they had all, all the all the guys there so like literally that can happen it, it, yeah. it can happen so like yeah i <laughs> i'm always for get to the playoffs if you can get to the playoffs then why not get to the playoffs like, get to the playoffs and yeah. let the chips fall as they may yeah yeah but speaking of trades though real quick because i you know i'm a huge blackhawks fan you are too i mean Mark Andre, like th- this team is an instant contender now, in my view. Oh, you don't think I put a future on the Hawks? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll wrap up with a little Mark Andre, uh, Flurry, Blackhawks talk. Yeah, so obviously with the Hawks, they with the signing or uh, sign in trade of, of Seth Jones, yep, uh, the trade Huge. of acquiring Mark Andre Flurry. Yeah, and people were pissed about that. Like, I do not understand it's it. Like, like, People were pissed like, about the Seth Jones stupid. thing too. They're like, ah, they gave away way too much. And he's, you know, he had a terrible year last year. I'm like, okay, if you're going to use an outlier year, like 2020 to uh, he's, he is a top five defenseman. He's yeah, 20, like, 25, 26. I mean, 26. He's going yeah. to, he's going to be playing for this team for the next eight years with this contract. Um, mm-hmm. Like it is a no brainer. The biggest weakness on this team was defense. They not only got him, but then they they acquired another defenseman and then drafted a defenseman too. Like this team is like we know they can score. Their biggest problem was they gave up five goals all the time. Uh, Lankin and Flurry. I mean, dude, like I, I'm ready to go, man. This team, I, if they don't make the playoffs, it's gonna be a huge disappointment because you know coming into the year, I would say, yeah, they're maybe still one year away. But now I think they're I think they're ready to compete in the playoffs. I'm not saying they're gonna go to the Stanley Cup, but. Uh, they, they've got a they good have shot. hope they, they have, have hope. hope and that's all we can ask for right now yeah their their decor is so they have De, which is crazy that dahan 
and Zadorov yeah. didn't get drafted That's in the exp- or get yeah drafted or taken in the expansion draft. The yeah, yeah. Kraken took uh, John Quenville. What the fuck? I have no idea what that was about. I was like, okay, well, yeah, go for like, it. What, I was what, like, all right. What's <laughs> what sense did that make? He's I like, don't know. He's a UFA. Like yeah. what? Yeah. yeah, I saw that and it was. Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't even find anybody that could make sense of it. So can't put it together. I mean, you, and you think about what the Vegas Knights did during the expansion draft. After the draft, you're like, dude, that team's pretty stacked. Yeah. Shoot. It's yeah, like, I don't, I Seattle don't what... could have done the same thing. It's not like the crop was as good as maybe the the Vegas had, but it was, it was still a good pool to take from. And um, thank you. Yeah. Could, they could have had Tarasenko, uh, either Matt, uh, Matt, yep. Jones, Matthew Shane or Ryan Johansson, Carey Price. Um, they have Mark Giordano. The Carey Price one too surprised me, although I know people were talking about a, like waiting on the hit. physical or whatever yeah, and the huge which, cap hit and stuff, but the physical was no problem. Like they, they could take care of that easily, you know? It's Yeah. So that, that's know. crazy. So uh, we'll, we'll get your final prediction here for, for baseball. What, give me, uh, give me your, your else, your LCS teams and then your world series teams and prediction. So um my World Series prediction, I already have the White Sox in there. Um, so White Sox and, I mean, it's hard. It's like, how do I not? Honestly, it's, it is really hard because I'm, I'm trying to think between who do I think. I, I, I don't buy that the Giants are going to make a, uh, you know, a dominant postseason run. I just don't. Like, I would feel more afraid of the Padres or the Dodgers. Um, so like, and even like the Mets are in first place, but it's like, all right, like, like DeGrom, they'll get you a win, but I, I'm not, you know, but after that, I mean, shit, I mean, Taiwan Walker's not p- throwing bad. No, he's not. I mean, I'm not, they're not a bad team. They're a good team. It's just, you know, if I'm, if I'm talking about a team that you're scared of going, making a, like a deep, a deep run in the playoffs and actually getting to the uh, world mm-hmm. series, I, I still, I think the Dodgers are going to do it again and, and get there. Um, and I think it'll be Dodgers, White Sox. I'll, I'll go, um, if, would this actually, could this work out with the Dodgers and no, it couldn't Dodgers would have to play the Padres in the, uh, wild card, right? Unless because one of them won the division. Well, yeah. 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 So, um, that, that would be kind of tough. Cause I would actually think the Dodgers and Padres are two of the best team teams in the, the NL. So yeah. I, I'd probably say for the NLCS, then Dodgers Mets. And for the ALCS, I'll go the White Sox and the Rays. And um, that would be my prediction there. And then White Sox uh, taking on the Dodgers. I, it'd be, I, I guess I'll say the White Sox win it. it to me, it's, you know, at that point, it's, it's really hard to, to predict uh, that far out. Uh, but I, I, I think the way the White Sox are built in that bullpen, I mean, just like, geez, dude, like, I don't scary. know. Yeah, it's super scary. And they have the bats. It's not like they can't take guys – um to task so you know Mm -hmm. yeah they've got a great starting rotation the dodgers do but i I think the white Sox could easily handle them so yeah man this might be the white Sox year and then that means that we just have to wait another 10 years for the cubs to win it then right because that's that's how that that works yeah oh five to 2016 yeah we'll cut that in 11 years with with judd at the helm and that jim hendry uh (laughs) yeah there you go i'm I'm gonna go i'm gonna go white Sox because i have the future on them and I'm, I'm going to say Sox Brewers, and then I'm probably just going to kill myself. Oh, wow. Here. Wow, man. That, that would that'd be rough. Brewers, I will say, I mean, the, the Brewers are good, man, too. They are. Their pitching is unbelievable. Yeah, Brand, Obviously, Brandon, Brandon Woodruff is really good. Stud, Corbin Burns with that yeah. cutter. Freddie Peralta is very underrated. If they, Yeah, and, and then Hater's, good. you know, just as good of a closer as anyone. Yeah, and uh, Devin Williams with that unbelievable changeup where he's just literally just tearing guys apart. <laughs> Yeah. Like disgusting. Yeah. I just don't, I, I don't necessarily trust their, their bats as much. They're, they're a little bit and, too, too fluky, yeah. you know? So like they, if they get, if they go on a streak, they could, they could definitely get there, but yeah. um, will they be able to sustain that throughout the entire uh, two series? I don't know, but yeah, it's, Hey man, I've seen crazier things happen. So. Ty world series predictions. Pirates are not making it. What do you mean, dude? <laughs> hey, what you don't. You never in? know. You never not know. Not mathematically dude. eliminated. <laughs> yeah, Actually, they so, probably are. I they don't probably know. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They They're have 
sick. Well, no, they they could they could still win ninety seven uh, games. Ninety seven games. I mean, I would probably just go. Sox I want Dodgers the Pirates too. get hot. Dodgers are the best team in baseball. Obviously, like they have yeah. been for a while, and then you know, Sox are hot. So my my Sox are hot, and <laughs> I'm gonna take them off. The Chicago hot, hot Sox. Yeah. The Chicago tie Sox. There we go. All right, so we got a fuck. For we talked about the Cubs ninety nine percent of the podcast, and then just all predicted the Sox in the World Series. I know, right? Well, that's, that's how that's how it's done. Well, Dan, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. Been we'll, fun. We'll have to get you on uh, right before week one. We'll we'll talk Bears and uh, oh yeah, and gambling and football and all that all that good stuff. But it'll be a blast. Yeah. Definitely look forward to that. So thanks for coming on, everybody. Thanks for listening to was it week twenty. Week, right. week 20, drop your Twitter handle and shit and your podcast, Dan, as well. Yeah, oh, yeah, plug plug everything. Oh, Give yeah, okay, plug. sure. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, at Dan Vasco, that's uh, it's pretty simple. You can find me on Twitter there. Uh, and then we do uh, a weekly NFL podcast. Uh, my co-host and I does radio in Illinois. Um, and uh, that's called The Football Lounge, and it's at FB Lounge Pod. Uh, on Twitter, or if you just go to my Twitter, you can find it as well there. Uh, but yeah, every week we do episodes. We just dropped a uh, full NFL team made up of U.S. presidents. <laughs> yes. uh, a pretty entertaining listen. So uh, definitely check that out. Oh, fuck, I'm definitely listening to that. That's a good one. I wish I would have thought of that first, but <laughs> oh man. Dan, again, thanks for coming on and we'll see everybody next Absolutely. week. Absolutely. Perfect.